In today's video, I would like to uh, demonstrate with you an inequality that is a bit similar to the inequality that we showed in a previous video. So for those who didn't show this video, you can find it on the link above. So for this inequality, we are going to use a, a little trick that is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And that's going to help us uh, prove this inequality much faster than if we were trying to use other method. The inequality that we are going to prove today is the sum from i equal 1 to n of xi square multiplied by the sum from i equal 1 to n of 1 over xi square. We are going to show that this quantity is greater or equal than n square. We are going to prove this inequality in two steps. And the first step will be to prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality can be written the following way. So when you are in the space Rn, so the n-dimensional space of real number, you can write that for any set xi and yi, you can write that the sum of xi yi square is lower than the sum of xi square multiplied by the sum of yi square. This inequality is well known for uh, those that study math at a certain level, but instead of just accepting it, what we're going to do in this video is to prove it for the case of the Rn space. So the way we are going to prove this inequality is by defining a polynomial that we're going to call P. It's a polynomial of a variable T that's going to be defined as the sum from i equal 1 to n um, of xi plus tyi square. And the reason why we can say that P is a polynomial is because you can see that it's a sum of the square of a polynomial of degree 1 that is xi plus tyi. So we can say that pt is a polynomial of degree 2, a quadratic polynomial that can also be written as at squared plus bt plus c. So we know that this polynomial will have this form, but what we don't know yet is exactly what are the coefficients a, b, and c. Another thing that we can notice about this polynomial p is that it's a sum of elements that are each greater than zero. And the reason why they are each greater than zero is because it's defined as a square that has to be greater than zero. So the sum of elements that are greater than zero is also overall greater than zero. So we know that pt has to be greater than zero as well. So the next step here is going to identify the element a, b, and c as a, a function of the xi and yi that we have seen above. So we are going to write that pt is equal to the sum from i equal 1 to n. And we are going to develop this uh, square that we are having here. And when we develop it, we have the uh, formula xi square plus 2t xi yi plus t square y square. We can rewrite this polynomial by putting the constant coefficient, the t coefficient, and the t square coefficient together. So we can rewrite this as being the, the sum of yi square multiplied by t square plus 2 multiplied by the sum of xi yi multiplied by t plus the sum of xi square. So I'm going to stop putting from i equal 1 to n here because it's obvious by now. So by writing pt this way, you can identify the coefficient a, b, and c. So we have the coefficient a that is this one, the coefficient b that is that one, and then the coefficient c, which is the following one. 
Now we are going to use the fact that pt must be positive to derive a condition on the coefficient a, b, and c. You may remember that there is a quantity for quadratic polynomial that we call the discriminant delta and is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And this discriminant delta is strictly positive when the polynomial pt has two roots. But what we know about pt is that the coefficient a that you can see here must be positive, and the reason is because it's a sum of yi square. So graphically, if you could represent pt, you could represent it this way. So it is oriented up because a is positive, but we don't know if it's crossing the horizontal axis or not, or if it's just touching it. So it's either like the situation A, or the situation B, or the situation C right there. And what you can see is that in the situation A, the polynomial P would have zero root. In the situation B, the polynomial B would have exactly one root. And finally, in the situation C, the polynomial would have exactly two roots. But what we have seen about pt above is that pt must be always positive. So it means that we cannot be in the situation c here when we have two roots. So that means that the polynomial pt must have either zero or one root. And what this implies for the discriminant delta is that we need to have delta equal b squared minus 4ac that needs to be lower or equal than zero. So we are going to rewrite this condition by using the value of a, b, and c that we have previously identified. So b squared minus 4ac is equal to 2 sum of xi, yi square minus 4 sum of yi square sum of xi square. And this needs to be negative. In other words, because we can eliminate the 4 that is here and there, because we have 2 square here, we can rewrite that the sum of xi yi square is lower than the sum of xi square multiplied by the sum of yi square. And this is exactly the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that we just proved. So now that we have proven this inequality, this is going to make our proof much easier. We are simply going to replace the quantity yi by the quantity 1 over xi. And you can use this Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that we have been writing here to show that the sum of xi multiplied by 1 over xi square is lower than the sum of xi square multiply by the sum of 1 over xi square. And xi multiply by 1 over xi is of course equal to 1. So when you sum xi multiply by 1 over xi, uh, you're basically summing from 1 to n, the quantity 1. So you sum 1 n times, and this is equal to n. So this inequality can be written as n square is lower than the sum of xi square multiplied by the sum of 1 over xi square. And this is the proof of this formula. So because this video was short, as a bonus of this video, I would like to show uh, why the formula of the discriminant is always working for a polynomial of degree 2. So what we are going to do is write this um, polynomial, quadratic polynomial, pdx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and understand why this discriminant is giving us so much information about the number of roots of this polynomial. So to do that, what we are going to do is to assume that the polynomial px can have another form that is a multiplied by 
x minus c square plus m. The reason why this formula is interesting for a polynomial is because we have a quantity that is always positive and a quantity m here that is going to basically tell us the minimum or maximum of our polynomial. Graphically, what's happening is that if you represent this polynomial, the parabola of the polynomial on a graph, you would see that the quantity c and m correspond to this minimum here when a is greater than zero. So c is the value of x for which you are reaching the minimum and m is the value of this minimum. In the other way, when you have a that is negative, c will be the value of x for which you are reaching this maximum and m will be the value of this maximum. And what you can see from this graph is that assuming that a is always different from zero, so it's either uh, strictly negative or strictly positive, you see that it's obvious to know how many roots the polynomial has based on the value of the quantity a m. So either a is strictly positive and m is strictly positive, in which case you are in that case, and you know that the parabola is never crossing the axis, so you have zero root, or you have m that is negative and a that is strictly positive, in which case the parabola is going to cross the axis in two points. If you have m which is equal to zero, in that case, you know that you are touching the axis only in one point, so you have exactly one root. And when you have a that is strictly negative, the reverse has to apply for m. So if you have m that is strictly positive, but a that is negative, you have two root. So basically, the condition to have exactly two root is that a m must be strictly negative. If you have a m that is equal to zero, you have exactly one root. And if you have a m that is strictly positive, you have zero root. So now what we need to do is to identify a formula for m that depends on the coefficient a, b, and c. So what we're going to do first is to develop this formula. So this can be written as a multiplied by x squared minus 2cx plus c squared plus m. And this is equal to ax squared minus 2ac(x) plus ac squared plus m. By identification, we can write that a is equal to a, obviously. b is equal to minus 2a big C, and c is equal to a big C squared plus m. This is equivalent to say that big C is equal to minus b divided by 2a, and so this is equivalent to say that c is equal to a multiplied by b divided by 2a squared plus m. So we have m that is equal to c minus a b square divided by 4 a square. So this is equal to c minus b square divided by 4 a. This implies that the quantity a m can be written as a c minus b square divided by 4 a. The sufficient and necessary condition to have two roots is that the quantity a m is strictly negative which is equivalent to say that the quantity ac minus b squared divided by 4 is strictly negative. If we multiply this by 4, we have 4ac minus b squared is strictly negative, which is equivalent to say that the discriminant delta must be strictly positive. This is how we know that a polynomial will have exactly two roots. So this is the end of this video, I hope you liked it, and if you did, please don't hesitate to uh, give it a like.